Okay, Erev Tov, everybody. Thank you for coming, despite the road closures. So, uh, there's an interesting sugya, an interesting question, which a number of people have uh, asked me over the course of the past day, since this morning, which is as follows. It, uh, so, we all, are, we all are aware of the events of last night, that uh, the president of Iran, mysteriously, his helicopter crashed and he died. Um, there was a joke going around, I'm sure you saw it, that there was a, that it started off as a joke. That there was a Mossad agent who was flying the helicopter whose name was Ellie Copter. It's a, it's not just a bad joke. There was that. What the real bad joke is that there was a foreign, uh, one of the one of the foreign news channels picked this up and didn't realize that it was a joke, and they reported on you know on live TV that Ellie Copter was flying the helicopter. In any event, they had to afterwards apologize, and which is rare. Normally they don't apologize and they make mistakes. But anyway, so the question is, what is our response to this kind of event? What is our response to the death of Rishayim? I think there is no, uh, there is no machloket here, uh, unless you're in the UN, that this uh, individual was a, was a Rashai, he was an anti-Semite, he was a murderer, he was just coming out now, the number of people that he tortured and killed to death and all sorts of indescribable things. Clearly the world is better off without him. Question is, what is our, what is our response? What is our halakhic response? And I've seen a whole range from those saying, those asking, why don't we say halal? To saying, why don't we say tachanun? Right? We'll find any excuse not to say tachanun. But uh, to those saying, uh, no, it's not appropriate. How can you celebrate at the death, etc.? The question is, are we allowed to? Should we be happy? Should we be celebrating at the downfall of our, of our enemies? Right? What do we? How do, how, how do we look at this? So I think the first thing I'll say is that the fact that we're asking the questions, like how do we respond? That, that's already, that's already good. Meaning, we spoke before, in different contexts, a lot of things have happened. A lot of momentous things are happening uh, in our lives over the past few months. We spoke when that, uh, that night, when the Iranians attacked with the 300 missiles. You know, to, th th we can question what exactly should the response be, but to ignore it. The worst thing you can do is ignore it. The worst thing you can say is say, nothing, nothing happened here. It would be presumptuous for any of us to try and understand exactly the meaning, the message, the way that you know the way that Hashem works, and exactly what he, uh, why he does things. None of us know that. We certainly need to act with humility. But again, to ignore and to act as if nothing happened, I think that is uh, that in itself is, is is much more problematic. In any event, so how do we how, how do we respond to this? So I want to share with you a mitna, which maybe gives us one uh, direction. There are many aspects to this question, and uh, I'm sure there are other other uh, avenues of thought as well. But it's very interesting. There's a Mishnah in Perkei Avot. Mishnah in the fourth chapter of Avot. And the Mishnah says as follows. Shmuel HaKatan Omer. Bin foloi o yivcha al tismach. U bikashlo al yage libecha. Pen yilei Hashem vora beinav veyashiv mealav apo. So Shmuel HaKatan says. Shmuel HaKatan, by the way, was familiar to us. You'll remember that in the Shmona Yisrael, which we have, which is always, uh, always, always, always remarked, that the Shemona Yisrael, which means 18, of course, is not 18 blessings. It has 19 brachot. And the reason for that is the extra bracha of Lamal Shinim, which was added in. Who is the one who authored that bracha? That is Shemona HaKatan. That the Gemara tells us. So Shemona HaKatan is uh, familiar to us. And it's very interesting that Shemona HaKatan is the one who wrote, who composed the bracha, which we say, you know, against the, against the enemies, against the heretics, whatever it is. He is the one who's telling us this. But he says in this Mishnah, Shemona HaKatan, he says, at the downfall of your enemy, do not be uh, uh, do not be happy, do not uh, celebrate. But right? when he stumbles, your heart should not be glad. Hashem will see it will be bad in his eyes. And his wrath will go away from him and it will go on to you. Now, what's very interesting about this Mishnah is that it says, Shmuel HaKatan Omer. Shmuel HaKatan says, well, all he's done is quite a pasuk. The best of my knowledge, I don't know that of, of, of any other Mishnah, where all the Mishnah is, where Atana just quotes a Pasuk, right? We could have said, Shlomo Amelechama, right? This is a Pasuk from Mishlei. What, what, what is Shlomo HaKatan saying? He's not saying anything. He's just quoting a Pasuk. Anybody can do that. You have to know the Pasukim, you have to learn Tanakh, right? That's, that's a Vesena. But, but, but that's the Mishnah. That's the Mishnah. Shlomo HaKatan says, okay? He quotes the Pasuk in Mishnah. So is it that, what, you know, Again, what Shmuel Akatan says, he assumed that we're only going, we're not going to learn Tanakh, and we're only going to learn Mishnah, and therefore this pasuk is so important that he has to tell it to us. He has to repeat the pasuk in order to emphasize. Obviously, there's a message that yeah, with that, that that's within the pasuk that's very important. But again, what the pasuk says, 
At the downfall of your enemy, do not rejoice. Do not be happy. That would seem to imply that when your enemy dies, so okay, said that. Well, we, we we're not uh, we're not going to be upset about it, but it's not a cause not a cause for celebration. It seems to be the other thing, the other difficulty, which is not brought in the Mishnah here, but is that if you open up Sefer Mishlei, if you've learned, and again we assume that Shmuel Akatan, when he quotes the when he quotes the pasuk for us in the Mishnah, assumes that we've gone and we've learned and we've learned the Sefer as well. So he assumes that we actually know the rest of Mishlei, what it says, right? One assumption. But we have another pasuk in Sefer Mishlei that says, "Be'avod l'shaim lina," that at the time when the when the evil are are, uh, are, are, are vanquished or defeated, right? So there is rina, there is song, there is praise. So that itself, that all the commentaries point out that within within the Sefer of Mishlei there is a, a contradiction in terms relating to this question. So the Rabbeinu Yona. Has a, has a very profound commentary here on this Mishnah. I want to read it to you and we'll see what, what, what he says and see how it maybe applies to our situation as well. Rabbeinu Yonah says as follows. He says, Ma balash Shmuel HaKatan beze. Right? He says, what on earth, what in the world is Shmuel HaKatan trying to teach us? Halo pasuk shalemu v'shlomo amro. As we said, the, the Mishnah should not say Shmuel HaKatan amro. It should say Shlomo HaMelech amro. That's what he said. He's just quoting the pasuk of Mishnah. He hasn't added anything on El HaRotzel amro. Okay, so that's the first thing. It says maybe, right? We know that throughout uh, throughout Mishnah uh, Navot, uh, you talk about who Omer, so and so Omer, so and so Haya Omer, and he would say it's not just something that he would say; it's something that he was. It's something that characterized him. It's a, it's a fundamental by which to live your life. So maybe it's saying Hayara Gil Shmuel Loma Pasuk Zeh. He would say this pasuk very often. This was his uh, motto. This was his mantra in life. Maybe. It's something very, very important, something that people have to know. And it's something which people get wrong, something which people stumble in. The uh, Ramchal, in his introduction to Msilat Yisharim, so he makes this point. He says, I'm going to write the Sefer. He says, you'll read through this entire Sefer, Msilat Yisharim, and you won't find a single Kiddush. First of all, that's not true. Maybe in his day it was true, but nowadays, right? You read, you read Msilat Yisharim, you'll find plenty of, plenty of Kiddush. But he says, my purpose in writing this work is not to teach you Chidushim. It's not to teach you new things that you don't that you don't already know. But sometimes the things which are most obvious, people forget. And because they are so obvious and they're so simple, people don't talk about them, people don't think about them, people forget them, and then people lose the uh, uh, lose the message. And therefore he says, he says, if you read my book once, you can forget about it. You're wasting your time. Because you have to read it again and again and again until you start to internalize, until you start to remember things. So sometimes the most obvious things are the things which uh, which people forget. So, uh, and again, unfortunately, you know, talking about current events and talking about things which are so obvious, like good versus evil, things which are, which should be so straightforward, people forget. We have to remind ourselves. So, so says Rabbeinu Yona, in this Mishnah, Shmona Katan is teaching us something which is important, which people forget. And, and and we have to remind us, which is as follows. He says, even though your enemy may be wicked, may be evil, you should not uh, rejoice. You should not celebrate in his uh, downfall when bad things happen to him. And under the following condition. He says, you should not rejoice in his downfall when it is for your personal gain or your personal benefit. Because if it is for the fact if it's for Kvod Hashem, if it's for the honor of Hashem in the world, if it's for not for any ulterior personal gain that you're having, but for ultimate objective good versus evil, that you're allowed to that you're allowed to celebrate. He's also By the way, this pasuk again, which he's quoting, according to the Gemara, discusses the pasuk and what it means. And 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 when we say here, we say the word enemy. So because of the context and because of how open and what we're all, we're all thinking about, you know, you're at war against another nation who wants to kill you, that's clearly an enemy. But sometimes people have enemies who could be their neighbors. Sometimes if people have enemies who, you know, for, for whatever reason. So in that case, certainly, it's just, it's just another person. You know, I have whatever arguments I have with this guy. I'm not talking to him and he's not talking to me. And most of the time it started off with something so small and you can't even remember what one spoke about on Shabbat. So, right. You can't even remember why it is that you don't talk to each other, but for whatever reason, he's your enemy and he's that. So in such a situation, certainly the Pasuk is saying, be, 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 be careful. Bad things happen to him. Who says that you're better than him? Who says at the end of the day, so you're going to celebrate his downfall. Shem's going to say, ah, 
You think you're better than him? Well, we'll show you that, that, that you're not. But he says if it's a case where your simcha is not because of whatever, whatever you know, personal, petty reasons. But he says, uh, what was the language? He says, he says, you are happy about the fact that has been, has been increased, that evil has been eradicated from the world, that the world is now a better place because somebody dedicated to death and torture and all sorts of terrible things happen. It's no longer, yeah. Again, we're saying we're not, uh, not to overdo it, but that's something that you, for that reason, you can be happy. But if you just happy about, you know, this is something that somebody has, somebody offended you and somebody upset you and you're celebrating that. So that is not appropriate. In other words, says Rabbi Yon, I'll read it to you here. There is, uh, so, so somebody sent me as well, a uh, piece by Rav Drukman. That's how he has a he has a safer it talks about war and ethics of war and all these all these kind of matters. And he writes as well, he writes a similar thing. He quotes from Rabbi Yonah in a different place. And he says like this. Um, he says, The fact that even if your enemy is wicked, but you're going to celebrate what happened to him because he's your enemy, because it's about me, or just you know, celebrate his death, so to speak. That is not that is not appropriate. As we said, that's, that's, that's exactly the uh, Rabbi Yonah that we just saw, um, and therefore he says that's essentially we daven for this. This is what we done for Hashanah and Yom Kippur in our tefillah. We say Kol Arisha Kula Ke Hashan Tichle. We done for time that the evil will be eradicated from the world. In other words. And, you know, somebody asked me the question today, and it was in very, very stark terms. You know, one of the things over the past few months, and one of the things that bothers us so much about our enemies is the fact that they celebrate death. It's the fact that you see the glee and you see in whatever videos or, or audio recordings, whatever we've seen, we see them celebrating every time there's an attack and they're handing out sweets in the streets. And, that's... and so you say, if you're happy that uh, at this downfall of this enemy, does that make us like them? Are we the same? So again, if you are celebrating death for death's sake, that is not appropriate. That is not uh, that. That is not what we do. But if we are celebrating the fact that there is less evil in the world, that there is more good in the world, that there is more opportunity, that less of these things are going to happen, so that is certainly something that's that's ultimately why we're fighting a war, and that's ultimately what we're what we're praying for, and that is something which uh, which which is appropriate to celebrate. Again, does it mean one should be going out and singing and dancing and handing out sweets in the streets? Maybe not. But that is the uh, that that is the concept. <laughs> Thank you very much.